In this video, we will discuss equilibrium, and most of the discussions I will do will be static equilibrium with no motion for the object, but that's not a, a particular requirement. Um, so here we have a photo of some rocks down on a pillar here, and it's been there for a long time. It's in static equilibrium. There's no net external force on the object. This top rock is being pulled down by gravity as a weight downward. There's an upward uh, push of the pillar below it on this top rock when those two forces balance. There's also no torque. Any uh, force times lever arm uh, imbalance that would cause the rock to rotate. And more on that later. But we're going to discover there are two requirements for uh, equilibrium. The net external force has to equal zero. The net external torque has to equal zero. Here we have a person standing. There's a normal force of the ground on the feet of the person. There's a weight downward. The free body diagram indicates uh, with roughly equal length arrows the net force is equal to zero. This person will be in equilibrium. Uh, a dynamic equilibrium for the car here. There's a normal force at each tire upward. The sum of those four forces equal the weight downward. The tires are pushing on the road. The road is pushing back on the tires. And that uh, forward force matches the air resistance and friction that might be uh, present uh, retarding the motion of the vehicle. So we'd have a dynamic equilibrium in this situation, but a balance of the forces. And again, there's no, uh, you know, these tires are fully supported. We're not going over the edge of a cliff where this uh, weight here would cause a torque that would rotate the, uh, the front end downward. So we have equilibrium here. Net force equals zero, net torque equal to zero. So here's a hockey stick, the two forces being applied here equal number of newtons left and right and we would have a net force equal to zero is that all we need to have equilibrium to have equilibrium well in this chapter we're going to consider the rotation of objects these two forces will not make the center of mass move to the left or the right they'll be balanced but suppose we apply the two forces not against each other but at different parts of the hockey stick the net force is still zero but the hockey stick will turn. There'll be some uh, axis here, say the center of mass of the object, and both forces are creating the same type of torque, the same rotation here, a clockwise torque from each of them, and those torques are not opposing each other. The object will accelerate in its rotation. There will be an angular acceleration. So in this chapter, we're going to try to avoid that. We're going to try to keep the equilibrium and have the torques, the net torque, sum to zero. So what is this torque concept? Well, it involves a force and a lever arm. So this is viewing down on the top of a door. There's a hinge at the left. You can see the doorknob. And there is a force pushing on the door. This force has what's called a lever arm. If we take the line of action of this force, imagine a longer line here than just the short red arrow, and we now investigate the distance, the shortest distance back to the axis, the hinge. That is called the lever arm. Our force and our lever arm need to be perpendicular to each other to do the calculation. So if we come in here with a certain size force, a certain lever arm, we get a certain torque. Torque is force times lever arm when the two are perpendicular. If we push with a smaller force, we get a smaller torque, and there'll be less angular acceleration for the door. Um, if we move the force towards the axis, it's more difficult to open the door. There'll be less torque. And this does not show the uh, type of door on gymnasiums, uh, crash bar going across here. I don't know if you've ever walked to uh, one of those doors and tried to open it, and you guessed incorrectly where the hinge was located and you push down here you have to push with a very large force in order to open the door if you push down here a smaller force out here that has a longer lever arm will create a better torque uh, another example of torque here we're pushing again with force and lever arm and this would create a clockwise torque this one is a counterclockwise torque um, 
if our force is not perpendicular to the lever arm, we'll have to do a calculation with sine or cosine, depends on what angle we're given. In this situation, a sine is appropriate. And we would have to take this sort of line of action of the uh, force, and we want the perpendicular distance to the hinge from this line of action of the force. R will be our hypotenuse, and R sine theta will give us the lever arm. What's the torque here? If we pull outward on the doorknob, straight out. Well, the torque is zero, because now if you would do this calculation with theta, theta is zero degrees, sine of zero degrees is zero. This force will not cause a rotation. There is no torque. Even though there's force here, there is no torque. Um, depends on where the axis is on what the torque value is and usually in problems you will be free to put the axis any place you want in the problem and there'll be a convenient place that will make the calculation easier but it is important you do need to know where the axis of rotation is if, if you're putting nails in hockey sticks then it's going to turn a certain way or depending on where the nail is with the same force being applied um, so our conditions for equilibrium. The sum of the external forces must be zero. You add up all the forces, they're zero. And you must do this in separately in the x and the y directions, as usual. We keep our x numbers separate from our y numbers. The net external force will be zero. If there is a net force, then the object's going to accelerate. It's not in equilibrium. The sum of the clockwise and counterclockwise torques must be zero. So you might want to look at a clock sometime and uh, get familiar with which way is clockwise, which way is counterclockwise. But we want the net torque to be zero. We will calculate the torques with force times lever arm, and we will um, adjust the lever arm if it's not perpendicular to the force. We have to do a side calculation that comes up with the lever arm that's perpendicular to the force. So, playground example. One person uh, at distance R2, another person at distance R1. So if uh, person number one has less mass, in order to make a fair uh, game of this, the person one has to be a greater distance away from this point of support. That gives this smaller force the same torque as the greater force here with a shorter lever arm. So to make the teeter-totter balance, the torques have to be equal. The way that can be done if you have people with different masses is to adjust the distance from this point of support. And then we still have equilibrium here. The support here, the fulcrum, is has an upward force on the whole system. We have two weights downward on the system. There's also, in real problems, there's a weight for the plank that they're sitting on. That's also downward. But the sum of the vertical forces would be zero. They'd be in equilibrium. Uh, this is a doll, not a baby. And to get stability, it turns out the center of gravity of the uh, object or person, if you don't do this, don't try this at home, uh, the center of gravity needs to be above the point of support to get stability. The center of gravity of the object needs to be above the point of support to have stability. So let's talk about a pencil. Pencil has a center of gravity here. Right now it's uh, stable, it's in equilibrium. What if we would tilt it a little bit? We come up here and push on the top a little bit. Can it remain stable? If we don't push too far, then the center of gravity here is creating a torque. It would be a lever arm down here, force going this way. It creates a torque that uh, makes the pencil stand up straight again. So it would be a, a stable situation. If we tilt too far, the center of gravity now is creating a torque that is going to aid the continued rotation of the pencil. And it will drop down to uh, achieve stability in a horizontal uh, arrangement on the table. Uh, so to keep uh, stability, our center of gravity needs to be within the, the support base of our object. Tougher to do if you're balancing on the sharp end of a pencil because now more easily the center of gravity gets outside of any support position and we don't have stability. Uh, we keep tilting on over. So if you're an athlete and you want to not be knocked over, um, a wide base of support is recommended such that your center of gravity stays within that uh, 
support base. If your feet are too close together, an opponent can easily uh, disturb your vertical arrangement, tilt you over a little bit, and if your center of gravity gets outside of your support, then you fall over. It's a law of physics. Uh, chickens, so they have their hips up higher here. Their center of gravity is below the uh, position of the hip joints. That gives them more stability. It keeps their uh, center of gravity inside their base of support more easily. Having the center of gravity below the uh, uh, the hip joints. Person holding a bar, if the center of gravity is equal distances from the two hands, each hand is going to have the same load. If the person uh, puts the center of gravity near the right hand, there's going to be a requirement that there's more force here to keep this in equilibrium, so we get a bigger, uh, bigger torque than we would have with an ordinary force. The force has to increase to give us the same torque that uh, this left hand is creating. Or if we put the center of gravity way out here, now the force is actually reverse direction. And this arm has to push down. This arm has to push up to keep the uh, object in equilibrium. And you can see the forces have increased. Then you might uh, generate some more numbers for this and uh, just investigate how the uh, strength of the force the person has to apply changes when we move the center of gravity off offset. So we've discussed uh, equilibrium. Uh, for static equilibrium, there's no motion. That'll be the most common type of problem we work with. We have to have the sum of the forces equal to zero, the external forces. We have to have the sum of the external torques equal to zero. That's the principle of equilibrium. And again, the torque, a little bit of a new concept, force times lever arm. We must have perpendicular directions for the force and the lever arm. Pay attention to that in the drawings that you make. And keep uh, practicing and asking questions.